This week, I was inspired by the spring fertility celebrations. So I made something to stuff eggs for an egg hunt. The Pocket Patch Pals Portable Utilities. It's a collection of useful passive devices housed in heat shrink tubing. Fun stuff. So let's talk a bit about these Patch Pals. First one is an attenuator, this guy right here. An attenuator is basically a variable voltage divider. So you have your input voltage here, and you have the resistor to your output, and from the output, another resistor goes to ground. So you have resistor one and resistor two here, and basically your output voltage is gonna be equal to your input voltage multiplied by R2 divided by the sum of R2 and R1. You can use this formula if you ever want to have precise attenuation of an input voltage. And a potentiometer is basically a variable voltage divider. It has a resistive element and a wiper. That's why it has three terminals. So the way to make a potentiometer into a variable voltage divider, connect one end to ground. The other end is your input and the wiper is your output. So the wiper is basically varying the relationship between the input resistance, input to output resistance, and the output to ground resistance as you turn the knob. And it's really easy to make one. First we're gonna cut off, I did already, I cut off all of the extra legs and attachments at the bottom of this pot right here. So now we're gonna take a look at the jacks and one of the legs, the one on the left here, is gonna get folded back and soldered onto this plate right here. This plate's gonna be our ground. And both jacks are gonna be soldered to this same ground as well. Just make sure that the signal, the tip leg, is facing the potentiometer leads, right? We're gonna tin this a little bit so that we can solder on the jacks. And that's gonna be a little bit of our structural stability is gonna come from this. Cool, so that feels pretty solid. So now, these two leads, bend them. So they'll go just a little bit inside of the, the jack hole right there. There you go, almost done. So just make sure that the middle, the wiper is not touching the side leg over here. If it is, you can just give it a little, little squeeze towards the center with tweezers like that. Now for structural integrity, it's not a bad idea to solder together these two ground lugs using a nice solid bit of wire. Like for example, what you get on a header like this. This is a right angle header, so I just need to straighten it out. And that seems pretty solid. Feels pretty solid. Make two parts that go from each jack to right past the potentiometer. So two equal parts, actually. This part, like that. Put one in here. And the other one here. Now we, we go from both sides, line it up nice, and light it up. And that's it. Just put a knob on it. And there it is, our little passive attenuator buddy. I also made a gate combiner, which is basically just an OR gate. Need a multiple OR gate. And an OR gate is just diodes. A diode from each input going into a common output node. Anodes to inputs, cathodes to output. Like this. To make the gate combiner, first I soldered four jacks to each other on multiple ground points, wherever I could, to make it into a sturdy little brick. Then I proceeded to place and solder on the diodes taking care to not let any leads short anywhere. Each of the three input jacks get a diode's anode, and all three cathodes go to the output jack. Then I cut a piece of thick heat shrink tubing, 
measured and made square holes for the jacks. Inserted the brick into the tube and the jacks through the holes. Warmed it up with a lighter. I then squeezed the ends with pliers and cut off the excess with some scissors. With a silver marker, I drew diode signs for the inputs and an O for output. Another useful little thing I made is a passive mixer, which is just three resistors from each input to a common node, which is the output. I use 47K resistors, which I think is a good value for synth levels, so you don't get too much interaction between the inputs, but also don't lose too much signal. The mixer is made the same way as the gate combiner, except instead of the diodes, you use 47K resistors. And the labeling can just be numbers for the inputs, and again an O for output. I also made a passive multi, which is really simple, just inputs tied together. Again, same technique for the structure, but instead of resistors or diodes, you connect all four jacks together with a wire. And I made some simple adapters like uh, capacitors. This is a 100 nano capacitor, this is a 10 microfarads non-polar capacitor, which is good for AC coupling. If you have an audio output with a lot of offset, you can use one of these. I also have some resistors can be useful for some simple attenuation or current limiting. For example, I have a filter that has very hot input, so if I put a 100k ohm resistor between my oscillator and the filter input, it works really well. I don't have to use an attenuator for that. Also made a diode, which is useful if you want to get rid of the positive half or the negative half of a signal. And there's even a little, little ground jack here. Whatever you plug in there gets shorted to ground. This can be useful to use, for example, one of these capacitors, multiple in the ground to make a low-pass filter. For the single component two jack pieces, I cut the switch leads on both jacks and snapped them together by the ground leads, so the signal leads are opposing each other, with the components in the middle connecting them together. Then the heat shrink just goes right on, no holes needed, since the jacks go out of the sides. Heat it up, identify the device, and you're done. This thing is a bipolar VCA, a sine or triangle wave shaper, and a ring modulator with just four components that fit right in the jacks there. That's pretty cool, I think. So I was playing around with the JFET. This is a 2N5457, and it's an N-channel JFET. I'm really happy about this because it's really simple, very, very few parts, and it does a lot of cool stuff. It doesn't need to be connected to the power bus. It takes its power from the modulation input. This is the diagram for a JFET. It's got its gate, and then source, and drain. And our drain, we're going to connect it to ground. The source gets a 100 ohms resistor to the amplitude modulation input. This is the audio input right here. It takes a 100 ohms resistor, 100 kilo ohms, sorry, to the gate. And our audio output comes out of the source through a 100 nanofarads AC coupling capacitor. Audio in and audio out. So we have a total of one, two, three, four parts. JFET, 100 ohm resistor, 100K resistor, and the 100 nanofarads cap. It's so simple that you can build it right onto the jacks. This is our CV input jack, audio output jack, audio input jack. I'm just gonna go ahead and solder the component that goes to each one of these jacks. We have CV goes in the middle, and the gate's gonna go to the audio input. The source goes to both those guys. They go together like this. And the drain goes to ground. So now, just need to accommodate everybody. Cut those ground lugs in the middle so they don't touch any of the components. Sort of squeeze them in. So they go in between these legs, just making sure you're not making any shorts.
The method to enclose the IMO is the same as for the mixer, the gig combiner and the multi. Really excited about this one. This is the IMO or input amplitude modulation output. It's this little passive bean I made with just four components that acts as a bipolar VCA or a wave shaper for triangle and sine waves or even a ring modulator. So with just four components that fit right inside the jacks that you can see here. Right now I'm sending it a sine wave from the ether oscillator into the audio input. The audio output is just going straight to both the oscilloscope and the mixer. And I'm sending the no coast sum section over to the amplitude modulation input. That way I can use the offset from the no coast to slowly sweep through the voltage range and we can see what happens to that sine wave. So right now we don't see any sine wave nor hear anything because I have the offset at zero volts. So that's why this thing can work as a VCA because at ground or zero volts you have zero volume. As I start turning it up, let's see what happened to that sine wave. like a sine wave at all anymore and if I keep going negative now I get a whole different range of waves and overtones very cool this is much closer to the original sine wave but it's still pretty distorted so this is what we have and you can fine-tune the timbre you want and then amplify it accordingly if it's too soft but it's also really cool to use the sweep. One thing that's interesting about this is that the distortion gives you more overtones the closer you get to zero. So it kind of works the opposite of a low pass filter or a wave shaper or a low pass gate uh, where usually the louder volume means a brighter sound. With this one you get a darker sound closer to a sine or a triangle at the louder setting and it's brighter at the softer setting. Let's get that back to zero and use an envelope generator. We're using the slope circuit here from the no coast. So you hear how that, as, as it decays, it gets brighter. A little delay in there. Oscillator, triangle wave. Which is receiving the same CV from the sequencer.
There's your usual ring modulation type sounds. Now let's synchronize the, the oscillator. So I'm going to send the Milko square wave to the hard sync input in the ether oscillator. Now we get this. It's like a nagging. That's it. Please like and subscribe. Tell me in the comments how abusing a JFET like this is sacrilege, or any ideas you may have for more passive patch pals. And consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep doing this. See you next week when we'll make a ribbon controller for your modular synthesizer. Actually performing this fade out, the patch pal attenuator.